I was the perfect victim. I was someone who fit all the criteria for someone who probably wouldn't say a whole lot. This was going to be a David and Goliath situation. The fact that, uh, you know, I'm a felon and an alcoholic and an addict versus a doctor who is well respected in East Texas. When I got out of the penitentiary, one of the first things that I knew I needed to do was to get the medications that I was given in the penitentiary correct. And Dr. Kellyanne was the go-to doctor in East Texas, and that's who I went to. When people within the, the Marshall and East Texas community claim that he's a, a great guy, there's no doubt that's, that's what they saw. However, people are only going to show you the side of them that they want you to see. Initial visits were nothing beyond just a doctor-patient relationship. Things really changed when my girlfriend, at the time, had some wealth. We'll be there in a second. And Dr. Callahan was brought in as kind of a concierge doctor. He traveled with us on a couple of occasions, hung out with us, and began to create a more friendly atmosphere. In other words, you're part of the pack now. And so there was a lot of loosening of the doctor-patient guidelines you would think be in place. I had once again gotten in trouble with alcohol. And so I had gone to a hotel to hide out. Dr. Callahan found out I was in the hotel and would swing by and check on me. It happened on one or two other occasions prior to him showing up and administering me medication. I can remember laying down on the bed and getting into a state where I was conscious but unable to, to move when it reached the point where it was obvious that I wasn't reacting or moving, uh, Dr. Callahan exposed himself and began to masturbate. Dr. Callahan eventually left. He came back over to pick me up and took me to his cabin. I couldn't remember how I'd gotten there or why I'd gotten there. When I was able to get a hold of a friend of mine, he picked me up and took me back to his house in Arkansas. Trey was in horrible shape. He was on the couch in the cabin he had thrown up, he couldn't hardly stand. We started driving back and we hadn't talked about anything. He's just kind of sitting there. And he just started narrating what had happened to him. He said, when I woke up, I had a penis in my mouth. He said, I just didn't understand what was happening. I took into consideration that he had been drinking. I took in consideration that I'd known Trey for all these years and that he had apparently had drugs in his system. And I believed every word of it because it was so eerily real. He was devastated. I said, well, what are you going to do about it? I called the police and they said that the only way that they would be able to pursue it is that I had to get some sort of evidence. Police department suggested that I record him talking about it. Do you know that that's not the first time? Because you said to Jason, I don't know, something that you, you never had your mouth or something. Or maybe to me you told me that. And you, you, are not, that's not anything. I'm, that's the second time. That's the second time. I don't remember. We, I mean, we made love all night long, Trey. So I was having a hard time understanding the separation of events when he said that that wasn't the only time. I became afraid uh, because it, what else had taken place when he had given me medications mixed with the copious amounts of alcohol. Marshall, Texas, it's mainly divided by those in power and those who have no power. For 10 years, I was publisher of the Marshall News Messenger. I was not surprised they no build Callahan because you've got a system of a hierarchy. You've got a doctor versus an ex-con. But just like a teacher, a doctor has the same obligation not to violate the basic principles of ethical behavior. And 
in this case, the boundary was not stepped over, it was shattered. What would happen if your license was suspended? What's the medical scene like there in Marshall, Texas for family practitioners like yourself? Well, I mean, I have 15,000 patients and uh, I'm not the only game in town, but pretty much uh, there's a few other PCPs that have no access. You can't go get a new patient appointment with them. In your testimony in the hotel room that was recorded, you, you apologized to Mr. Wood, tell him that would never happen again. Do you have remorse for the way that you approached Mr. Wood? I was referring to the October 2015 event when we were in my basement. That would never happen again. And I never did let it happen again. That's and what you're I was denying that there is a second sexual act between you and Mr. Wood. There was Wood. never a second sexual act and he knows it but he's not willing to tell the truth. Would you describe this as a, as a one night stand with a patient that you know is against the medical board rules? Absolutely, absolutely. People have suggested that I should feel vindicated or better. I don't. There's no winners in the situation. But I was given the opportunity to speak and tell my side of the story by the medical board and I'm thankful. And I was not given that uh, by the prosecutors and the police department. Because now we're talking about a situation that doesn't just involve Trey Wood. It involves a community and thousands of patients. My story definitely says that you need to look deeper than just a degree on the wall.